and get Ted Wynn's new seed. It'll bless you real good. Uh, my next guest is an, an anointed man of God, a favored man of God, who has a mir miraculous testimony, too, of God's grace and power as it relates to the surrender of your will to just make minor changes in your daily lifestyle. He is a living example, amen, that if you are committed enough, you can see thing, any and everything change in your life. His name is Bishop Greg Davis. He is the overseer and founder of Greg Davis Ministries. He's the author of How I Did It. We'll talk a little bit about that book in just a few minutes. Join me, help me to welcome Bishop Greg Davis. Good to see you, friend. Bless you, man. It's an honor to see you. Amen. I be there. The body of Christ uh, at large is blessed by your ministry. Thank you, through sir. the many different uh, media outlets that you work at and the different ways that God is using you to reach the world through the gift of that anointing of media that is on your life. Thank you, sir. Uh, what the world may not know is that you're a type 2 diabetes survivor. Yes, I am, sir. April, uh, first of all, I want to thank God for Paul and Jan and yourself uh, for allowing us to be here tonight. April 28th, I went to the doctor because um, I was sharing with a friend of mine. Uh, I had been going to the bathroom on a regular basis, and he said, well, it's either you're prostrate or it's, it's diabetes. Knowing that my family uh, had traits of diabetes throughout my grandmother and various ones, uh, I went to the doctor, born-again doctor, and I'll share more about that, born-again doctor, Dr. Carnuccio. I went to the doctor. And uh, he checked my prostate. He said, no, you, you're fine. You're healthy. And then he did the test on my, um, my blood. Come to find out my sugar was 320. Wow. Uh, very high because I abused my body. Uh, as many as uh, in the body of Christ do, we, we eat late. Uh, we preach and then we go and eat and fellowship and we sit and eat again. And that's, that's what we do. We have church and eat. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I... Um, I said to him, I said, what does that mean? He said, you're going to have to change your whole lifestyle. Um, all the things that you ate every, every week, every Wednesday before I taught Bible class when I was pastoring, had two pork chops and fried pork chops with gravy, uh, smothered in gravy, rice, black-eyed peas, uh, barbecue sauce on the side, greens, and macaroni and cheese. Some of y'all getting hungry right now. <laughs> but I, I did that. You did that every Wednesday? Every, every Wednesday. It was a ritual. Uh, sweet tea, uh, two or three times after I get through preaching at McDonald's, almost 400 calories by itself. Uh, I was abusing my body. Uh, I wasn't really a sweet eater, but I started eating chocolate cake, and late night I would eat chicken wings with it. Just abused my body, and it caught up with me. And if you don't, if you don't take care of your body, it'll start speaking to you. Yes, sir. My body starts speaking to me, and my doctor said, your sugar's 320. I need you to go on pills immediately. And I said, no, I'm not taking pills. And, uh, and I believe in doctors, and I believe God sent him here. But as soon as he said it, God put a witness in my spirit that he was going to heal me from the type 2 diabetes. He said, I need you to take it because your kidneys could be gone. Uh, you could lose your kidneys function. You could lose every function about your body if you don't go on the pill. I said, no, what do I need to do? He said, I need you to stop eating any um, sweets. I need you to stop eating fried foods. I need you to get off of uh, any sodas, which I drank a lot of water, but I still had type 2 diabetes. And um, he said, I need you to change your whole lifestyle. I need you to eat. I said, what about macaroni and cheese, my favorite? He said, no, I need you to get off anything that is white, pasta. I need you to change your lifestyle. I need you to walk every day for one hour. Wow. I said, you mean I got to walk every day? I left there. First time in my life, Pastor Zach, that I've ever been afraid. I've never been sick. I've never been to the hospital. First time in my life that I feared that I was going to die because I had never been sick. Went straight from there to the mall to buy some New Balance uh, gym shoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started walking that very day, April the 28th, almost a year ago. I'll celebrate. I went back to the doctor. Uh, 30 days later, I lost about 15 pounds. I walked five miles a day. Wow. Five miles a day. I stopped eating everything he said that day because I heard the word of God say that I shall live and not die Praise and God. declare the works of the Lord. <laughs> the thing about it was, though, I sat there in the doctor's office and I said, how in the world can I be on television every week saying, let the healing begin? That's my theme, let the healing begin. CDs and, and books about healing. 
And here now, I am facing a challenge. And God said to me, you can't really let the healing begin until you've been through it yourself. You can't lay hands on the sick until you've really been through it. Many of you that are watching now, you don't know that he's a company keeper unless you've been lonely. The old Baptist preacher said, you don't know that he's food on your table until you've been hungry. You don't know that he's a healer until you've been through it yourself. Yeah. And so many times we practice things, but we haven't been through the test ourselves. Yes, sir. And so God had me at this place. I, start, I was obedient to the doctor. I start walking every day, five miles a day. I went back to the doctor on my way to do a healing crusade in New Jersey. I was on my way back to the doctor, and God spoke to me and said, have him test you again. And I went back to the doctor. I had lost about 15 pounds in 30 days. I wasn't playing because I wanted to live. I went back to the doctor. He said, you look good. He said, but I want to know why you refused to take the pills. I said, because I believe I'm healed. He said, I have never seen anybody walk into this office, type 2 diabetes, with 320, at 320, and not take the pills. He said, do you understand what you're saying to me? You're saying to me that you're willing to suffer losing your, your kidneys, you're willing to suffer losing some of your, your capacity to, to limbs and all that just because you're being hard. I said, no. I heard the Lord said that he was going to heal me. Now, this is a believer. He's a believer. He, he, he prayed with me. And here's the prayer he said. Dear Lord, I pray right now that the bishop would take these pills. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that you would speak to the bishop so that he would have some sense to take these pills and do what I have told him to do. And he said, amen. I said nothing because I believe that when God says something, I don't care how safe somebody is, you don't agree with them if God says something different. That's right. We, we have too many people that's compromising the voice of God. When you have a relationship with God and he has spoken a certain thing over your life, that's right. whose report will you believe? Yes, sir. As for me, I believe the report of the Lord. He said to me, he said, okay, let's make a deal. He tried another way. You know, every time the enemy will come a different way. He said, I can't that's get good. you this way. That's good. You know, that's good. I can't get you to do it this way. I'm going to come at you a different way. He said, here's what we're going to do. We'll make a deal. He said, by tomorrow when this test come back, if by chance, you know, I know what you believe. He said, if by chance your, your type 2 diabetes is not gone, he said, will you take the medicine? I said, I won't do it. He said, are you crazy? He said, do you understand? I said, no, I won't do it. He said, let's take the test. He said, you look good. He said, but I've never seen it. They took the test. I'm on my way. I did my first night of the healing crusade in Jersey. Um, the next day at 5 o'clock, I'm getting dressed for the second night of the healing. I'm praying for the sick still because yes, I believe I'm healed. Yes, sir. I go, uh, I get ready, I get up. The doctor's office called about 5 p.m. as I'm getting ready. She said, Dr. Carnuccio says, um, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Keep eating the way you're eating. Keep walking the way you're doing. He said, because your sugar type 2 diabetes is gone. Not only. <laughs> not only. Not only has it been lowered, but it's gone, it's normal. So whatever you're doing, keep, keep on doing it. Good. And I stand here. I was weighing 250 pounds. Yes, sir. I weigh 177 pounds now. Wow. I walk every day. And no, actually, I'm running, I'm running three miles a day. Wow. I do it every day of my life because it's not a diet. But I change my lifestyle. lifestyle. I don't care who sits next to me and eat two pork chops and greens <laughs> or whatever. God told me I have to change my lifestyle. And I sit here as an example for the body of Christ yes, that sir. we have to bring our body under subjection. Good. And the word is discipline. Yes, sir. Because we can't walk around saying that this is our temple and God dwells in our temple and we got sicknesses in our body. No, sir. And so I stand here today to tell you that I'm fully healed of type 2 diabetes. Hallelujah. And the very doctor that spoke and said, I've never seen it before. He had to shake his head and say, I don't know how in the world it happened, but I've never seen it. But we need to take a picture of you because you are healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Um, so many, like when Bishop McKissick was talking, so many different things, yes, so sir. many different streets to go down. Yes, sir. And hearing a testimony uh, uh, like that. I think I want to start at the place of knowing what you believe. Yeah. You, you have to know, you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that you believe 
what God said. And I believe, I, I, I've, I've always been a person of faith, but this was a different level of faith because this mm -hmm. meant my life. Mm -hmm. I've always been able to step out and do things that God told me to do. But this was a different trust in God. I believe, Pastor Zach, that when you can't even see him, you still got to trust him. Yes, sir. When you don't even know which way he's taking you, you still got to trust him. That's good. The Bible says some trust in horses, yes. some trust in chariots, yes. but the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous, no matter what, I'm talking to somebody too. That's right. You have to know what God said. I don't care who you live with. I don't care what they're saying, because you need to understand friends will mess you up, but family will do you in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No matter, no matter what, I, I've had people tell me, Pastor Zach, I, I have, I've had people tell me, say, you know, uh, uh, you need to eat. You know, you look sick. You look, no, no, no. I have to look like this because I'm healed. Mm -hmm. It's so funny what I don't understand that when we're out of shape mm -hmm. and we're, we're, we're out of line with God as far as our bodies, folks will say you're healthy. Mm -hmm. But when you lose weight and sick. you look like you're supposed to look, Amen. Then they'll say you're sick. Yeah. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yes, sir. Amen. It's so funny how we take the wrong mm -hmm. and make it right. Yeah. But take the right mm -hmm. and make it wrong. Yes, sir. And I'm saying to the body of Christ that we have to do better because the world is watching us. There's more obesity in the church than ever before because we don't do anything but eat and go to church. Yes, sir. We have to do some other things to bring our body under subjection. So I'm saying tonight that no matter what God says, no matter what others say, you have to believe what God gotcha. says. If he says that your job is, is going to, you're not going to suffer any loss on your job, you got to believe that no matter everybody else get laid off, you're going to be still working. Mm -hmm. If he says that you're an entrepreneur, I don't care what the economy looks like, you got to believe that you're getting ready to start that business. Talk about if God says, if God says that he's expecting to reign in your life, yeah. you got to get ready for the overflow in your life. If God says you're healed, mm -hmm. then you got to believe God. God that you healed yeah. and no matter what a devil in hell says you got to stand on his word and believe it praise God <laughs> amen um, in less than a year you lost 70 pounds eight months in eight months without, eight months 80 pounds without 80 without the um, mm -hmm. the bypass surgery there was that surgery no, called no, I, I always no tell medicine folks, I'm gonna take my shirt off and prove it to y'all because they keep asking me no, no, I believe <laughs> Not tonight no. I believe uh, without medicine without surgery simply there's the word the next thing I want to talk about will will simply through your own will yes yes you were able to evict diabetes from your body and shake off from your body 80 pounds. Yes, sir. Talk about the power of will. You know, I, I believe it all starts here. Mm -hmm. It starts in the mind. You, 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 you have to first, if you can't get it in your mind, if you can't believe that you can do it, then it, it, it's, it's done. And then after you believe that you can do it, then you have to say it. Mm -hmm. And you have to say it, watch this now, you have to say it until you see it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. sir, I understand. You, you, you got every day that I got up, I believed God for my healing, but then I had the willpower and I had discipline to do exactly what I needed to do. Once I got what I needed to do, then every day I have the will. I have a treadmill sitting right in front of my bed. Mm. Uh, I have to walk every day. Did I feel like it? No. That's, that's what we need to understand, yeah. that, that even though our will is strong, the enemy is saying, you don't need to do it today. Uh, yeah. You can just take off today. And that's what many of us do. We say, you know what? I don't have to do this today, but your will keeps saying, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Your will keeps saying, I'm healed, but uh, with his stripes, I'm healed. No matter what you're going through, you got to have the will. You got to will yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, you got to will yourself. You got to say, you know what, I don't care. And the thing about it, Pastor that I had a friend that started off with me. I had, <laughs> I had folks, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I had some friends that started with me. And uh, one told me, he said, you walk too fast, just keep going. I, I can't do it. <laughs> and then before I noticed it, yeah. and this is kind of, this is a word for somebody. Before mm. I noticed it, at the end of the day, I was left by myself. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, God told me yeah. that this was for me. Yes, sir. And that's a message for somebody. <laughs> Everybody's not going to hear what God told you. That's right. And some folk will do it 
because it's a popular thing to do right now. Mm. But God told me that this is the way that he was going to do it for me. He was going to heal your body. So, he going to heal my body. And so many people try to do it because you're doing it. Mm. But you have to understand what God says for you and the plan he has for you and how he tells you to walk it out mm -hmm. is what God has for you. And I had the will so much that I didn't care who fell off that's along right. the way. That's right. And I that's a that. word for somebody. Say that. Because you, ha you started off with a crowd, and I'm talking to somebody in the audience. Yeah. You started off with some other people along the way. Yeah. But as you kept moving, they couldn't hang because where you about to go and what God is about to do, now unto him that's able to do exceedingly. Because yeah. what God has for you is not for nobody else. Amen. Amen. Um, Bishop, um, the woman with the issue of blood had to push past the people and yes, push sir. past other, the reports and so forth and so on. Lot had to keep going even though his wife looked back. Um, what would you say uh, to that person who's heard they can't, there's no other way, it's impossible? Pastor Zach, I, 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 need, I need to just uh, share this real quick because... Many people look at me and all that God is doing and even my testimony, but there's a greater testimony because my mother was a prostitute. Mm. My mother was a call girl. Uh, my mother was Caucasian. She was mixed with um, uh, Italian and Creole. My dad was African-American. My mother never knew the Lord. I grew up in New York City until I was nine. My dad introduced uh, me to my grandparents, begged my mother, said, get him out of New York or he's going to die here in the streets. And uh, at the age of nine years old, I moved to Detroit and met my grandparents, Reverend Ananias Davis and, and First Lady Jenny Davis. And you're looking at somebody, if it had not been for one choice that my father made to get me out of New York City, there's nowhere in the world I'd be sitting here today but God. When you tell me, when you say to me, Bishop, I've been through this, and I've been through that, and I, I've gone through this. Then you need to hear my testimony that God took mm. a prostitute son wow. and brought him to the place that he's at. And I'm sitting here on the couch of TBN. Yes, sir. Talking to Pastor Zachary Tim. <laughs> if God can do it for me, yes, sir. then God can do it for you. Yes, sir. Um, I want you to pray. We have 30 seconds left. Uh, before you pray, I want to say again that you wrote a book about how you lost 80 pounds how you evicted that type 2 diabetes from your body. We didn't get to talk about it, but I know it's in the book. You reprogrammed your mind. Yes, sir. You rewired yes, sir. your thinking pattern. Yes, sir. And I know we didn't get to talk about it, but I know it's in the book. Yes, sir. And I encourage everyone to go to a Bishop Greg Davis website so you can get this book, How I Did It. You can do it, too. Pastor Bishop, look into the camera and pray in our last 20 seconds for somebody who needs to change something. Just lift your hands. Father, I thank you for your healing power right now. With your stripes, we are healed right yes, now. Lord. Father, I release the healing anointing right now. Yes, Lord. And I say, let the healing begin. Sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer right now. There's a woman being healed right now. Father, touch her right now. She has tears and eyes. The healing power of God is your home right now. And because I did it, I know you can too. And we speak healing across this world right now, on every continent right now, as this telecast goes forth. We speak healing, and it's done right now. And we clap our hands in Jesus' name, and we call it done. Let the healing begin. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let the healing begin. Let it flow. Amen. There's more that God wants to do in your life. 